there's a lot of opportunity and possibilities yeah. with 3D printing that I need to explore. And so I bought an X1C, little guy, you know, yeah, but right. really capable, super well known. And I started using it for more functional printing. And I very quickly realized that I'm going to outgrow this machine. It's capable. It's great. It's cool bench top to Very do stuff. Easy to use. But I need to move into mid grade and high grade level printing yeah. that has large format, has more capabilities to it. And yeah. so that's kind of where the pursuit went. And it it's almost like hand in hand. I started this project on a big aerospace project that was going to be very heavy into the three D printing additive manufacturing solution. And that's where the light bulbs went off. Like, I need to make an investment. Yeah. I need to pursue something larger and bigger to 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 level up. And now, I mean, and that is you're doing end final end use parts. Yes. For aerospace, absolutely. On the yeah. 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 Okay. So tell me about that. So you're at a certain point. You're making these. You got your bamboo. You're designing parts. You're building parts. At what point was it? I need to 3D print a prototype that's got better properties you know, chemically, thermally, strength, rigidity, whatever. But so yeah. this aerospace project is really interesting because it's it's a one-off. So when you're considering manufacturing methods, you have to consider like the life of the product. Right. So if you're going to do hundreds or thousands of a product, mm -hmm. perhaps additive maybe isn't the best solution right now. Most efficient, I think it's coming. Most affordable. Yeah, right. maybe it's not yeah. the most affordable. Maybe it's not the most efficient. If you're talking thousands or tens of thousands of quantities, injection molding is going to win because right. it's worth paying for the investment of the molds. Exactly, which is how much, what are molds in your experience? Oh, I mean, so yeah, range, injection right. molding, tens of thousands, investment casting, which, I mean, those are metals, but still, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars. Thermoforming, which we used a lot, you know, five, maybe $7,000, yeah. depending on complexities. Right. So you have some immediate sunk cost that as a business, you got to yeah. try to recoup that before you right. start making money off your product. Mm -hmm. Now, in this situation, this project, there is literally one flying version of it today. And that, that's all there will that's be. That's it. And that's all there ever will yeah. be, most likely. I mean, there's a couple, but yeah. likely this is the only time this is going to happen. So it's like we have a bunch of one-off designs that need to be produced rapidly without big investment. Okay, additives looking really interesting. Yeah. Now yeah. let's look at geometries and design this system I had to work on was the, the full HVAC system inside the plane. We're talking about a Lockheed Martin Constellation. We're talking, this is a commercial airliner before turbojets became okay. the industry standard. Yes. So this is a big plane. Big plane. Big plane, Lockheed. multiple passenger, getting a full resto mod, update, okay. modernization, and systems. Kind of a rolling art and museum, if you will. This is actually where we've seen like a lot of our print service parts that were for end use. They'll be like guys that are restoring private jets, things like that. And maybe yeah. they'll electroplate the part so it's you know beautiful metallic yep. or something, yep. but it's made with Ultimate uh, 9085. Yeah. So it's aerospace yep. certified, lightweight, yep. all these things. Okay. Exactly. This project for me, I've designed nearly 100 unique components for this. And the, for the HVAC system. For the HVAC system. And with aircraft, each system's independent. So you have a heat system that's its own unique system. You have gaspers or fresh air system, which is all its own unique plumbing mm -hmm. system. Okay. And you have AC, which also is its own system. So each is independent. They're not shared like we're used to in cars or right. homes. So fitment into wow. the airframe, this plane is not square. It's also not round. It's everything in between. <sighs> we're talking ellipses. <laughs> and uh, semicircles and organic profiles as the plane moves forward and aft, the air structure and left and right that Same. makes almost any other type of manufacturing process extremely difficult, time consuming and expensive. Yep. So again, additive is looking very attractive. So now we have to consider, okay, this is aviation. Uh, what are certifications? Oh, this plane is experimental. So we get a little bit longer, you know, a little more gray space we can work with then. Mm -hmm. But the target of the client was that we continue to use materials that could potentially be certified and would satisfy those requirements, even though they can't technically get it certified, right? Yeah. So VO flame retardant materials was key number one for yep. any type of component that is either hidden, inaccessible, or large scale. So the entire AC system yeah. is an FR VO flame retardant material. Yeah. So that's uh, like uh, UL94 V0 rated. Yeah, UL94 V0 yeah. flame retardant rating. So that's all. that was all FR PC ABS from 3DX Tech. Okay. Interesting material to work with. So that was fun getting the machine set up and utilizing that. 
So again, a lot of organic profiles in the heat system for SCAT connections and routing to different locations coming out of the combustion heaters. You, you have an Instagram that's very active. Yeah, and yes. you're almost every day we're seeing new posts and the, you know it's printing something on twenty two and it's just this like this tube, but it goes and there's all this crazy geometry looking. Well, when you're running yeah. the machine twenty four seven, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. The other main material in this project was Fiberon PPSCF, and this material is specific, specifically chosen. Again, it's a UL ninety four VO flame retardant material, yep. and it has extreme heat tolerance yes so this heat system in the location closest to the combustion heater where all the heat is provided or created for the aircraft mm -hmm. that's operating upwards of 350 degrees fahrenheit mm -hmm. so having material that we can create this unique geometries but also handle the working loads and temperatures that are going to be flowing through it right. was critical now PPSCF. In the last six months on the in the interwebs, there's been a thing. A lot of people are printing PPSCF on a bamboo machine. Mm -hmm. You're doing all this stuff on the 22. Why not just print that material on the bamboo? So the PPSCF is, I think it's a fickle beast to work with. It is. It prints nice, but using the filament can kind of be a pain point. It's very brittle, mm -hmm. so it breaks easy in the PTF e-tubes feeding into the the hot end right so that was definitely a challenge i faced and which i had to overcome it's fine part of the challenge mm -hmm. i think the big one in printing it is large format a lot of my parts they printed they're 16 inches tall yeah uh, i don't know what the metric conversion of that so i needed build volume for this project yeah. we're talking about six inch connection pipes with geometry and offshoots to yeah. them. And I wanted the temperature. I mean, this is printing yeah. at 340 degrees C. The bed, it's at 80, 85 degrees C. Chamber, I think I was running 78, which bamboo can't do that. No. And you don't have the build volume. Yeah. So you dabble in these high performance materials and especially combined with large format projects, you start running out of options. And that's where yeah. the Vision Miner just really hones in and nails that type of application it yeah. just it just kills it thank you yeah. it's one of those things where like you know we started years ago and and there's availability machines but we're like we're only doing high temp this is our focus this yep. is our mastery this is what we are doing this is what we focus on over the years you know reselling different machines and whatnot at a certain point we're like well we want this feature we want that feature and so we we do a lot of feedback with the companies we've worked with mm -hmm. but at a certain point it made sense to hey we need to just do this ourselves. This, this needs to be ours. It needs to be our baby so that we can make it the way we're using it out in our shop every day and the way yeah. our, the feedback we're actually getting from customers to have the features that we need. So like one of the things with 22 is it doesn't have a 250 Celsius chamber. If it did, it would be three to five times the price. So keeping it within a price range too for yeah. small business, uh, manu you know, manufacturers to buy fleets of them without spending four million dollars. You know, yep. we've really hit that price point in features. That's just like, okay, this is a crank and workhorse. You've defined your own niche, niche, yeah. if you will, in the additive yeah. space. Right. Yeah. It's, it's very it's specific. I'm a solopreneur right now. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all of my work. I'm managing all of my customers. I The only thing I'm farming out, if you will, is bookkeeping and yeah. CPA work. I don't want to do that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm a one-man show, essentially. And for me to be on a project, see the opportunity, and say the Vision Miner is the one I want to team up with, mm -hmm. that's powerful because it's attainable. But yeah. it's, it's, it's attainable and capable even for the small business owner. Right. But like you said, if you're a bigger business or you're making a big jump into additive, yeah. you can scale with it really quickly. Oh, yeah. Just, just one, two, three, four, five, dude, six. Beautiful part. And it's and again, it's still very attainable. Yeah, we've had quite a few companies start with one or two and then within a few months be like, hey, we need another four. Uh, we need another six. Yeah. We need another two. I believe it. And it's like, it. oh, good. It's working. You know, a big part of that is just being there for the customer yeah. and, and having the support team, having having the video training and the wiki and just documenting and then answering the phone. So it's great you say that, Rob, because I think it's really interesting the decision making around making an investment like that as a business owner. Mm -hmm. I've been in business for 12 plus years now. Mm -hmm. And I've been through the ringer with other companies and I've had great experiences with other companies. Yeah. 
And when you make an investment like that into an asset that should create a return for yourself, right. which is why you're doing it, yep. one of the main reasons why I'm sitting here right now and why we're chatting and why I invested in Vision Miner was not just the machine, but it was honestly the communication, the connection, and the follow through from your team. It was, and, and, I, and I, don't even, I don't even say that from additive companies. I say that in general commerce. Yeah. The experience I've had with Vision Miner has been absolutely top tier. Thank you. And I got a story, actually, that confirms this. Okay. Real life story. All right. So, so we're in the middle of this constellation project. In, I've gotten the machine. Okay. I've had it running for a month or so. Um, it's, it's kicking ass. Running 24-7. I think it ran for a month and a half straight. Whoo. I mean, 24-7. 24-7. And if it Sweet. needed to swap a part in the middle of the night, I was up in the middle of the night swapping parts. Nice. That was just what was required. Yeah. Right? Friday night, it is Memorial Day weekend about to start, and I had an issue. You correct me on the details, but the servo motor that yep. holds the bed leveler sensor, yep. it fried itself. It just decided, I'm done, and nuked itself. All right. Shit. Yeah. Now what? I got a four-day weekend coming up, and I need this machine to run. Can't calibrate, out. can't nope. level. Can't, can't, can't do anything. Ah. So Saturday morning, I was like, you know, I got to try, right? I called you guys. And lo and behold, Kyle answered. Yeah. I'm on the phone like, holy shit, <laughs> they answered. Now what? I didn't even think I'd get to this point. Yeah. You guys answered. Kyle and I talked through it for a bit. Okay, let me connect you with Nazar and get on engineering, and let's see if we can figure this out yeah. and get a part out to you as soon as possible. Yeah. Wow. Like, are you kidding me right now? Got me with Nazar. Him and I hashed it out, you know, within an hour of that. Figured out what the problem was. Is there any other damage? Oh, maybe I think a wire melts. Okay, I'll just anything that looks wrong, we're just gonna send everything to you ASAP. He went out of that way Memorial Day weekend to get parts to I think it was USPS as quickly as possible. You guys literally did everything in your power to solve that problem. Now, USPS didn't really support your efforts, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. over a holiday weekend. But the fact that you guys would go out of your way like that to try to solve a client or customer's problem to get them back up and running, uh, that just that speaks so much. Yeah.